So this is the regular meeting of the Woodbridge Conservation Commission, February 15th, 2018. Right into the agenda here, uh, public comments. We do have a gentleman here, but we're gonna slot him in for uh, item three on our agenda. Uh, there are no other members of the public to speak. So we'll move on to item two, which is to review and approve the minutes of the January 18th regular meeting. I looked for them. I couldn't find them. Wait, did I take them? I thought Betsy took them. Because yeah. wasn't Betsy here last time? Yes, yeah. thank God. Okay, that's what I'm recalling okay. as well. Okay, so we don't have them. So we do not have them. Okay. So we will table them for the next meeting for March. I just don't want to do anything wrong. Don't worry. You're not in violation. Okay. It would all, all the heat lands on me anyway, I'm chair. <laughs> Okay. All right. Now it's Leland's turn. Now, now it's item <laughs> three. <laughs> now, exactly. That's why I figured this is going to be quick. So the third item on the agenda is to discuss the potential for an agriculture commission. Um, um, Leland, our commission member, had circulated some stuff today around to everybody. Um, I've been getting wind of interest in, in the town from some, some members of the community about an agricultural commission. Um, Back in 2008, I think it was fall 2008 when I was starting the Massaro Community Farm with that organ, that group of people, I came before the Board of Selectmen and suggested a Tri-Town Agricultural Commission at the time. It was just a, an idea. Yeah, Tri-Town, so Bethany Orange Woodbridge type of, type of a thing. Um, at that point, it was just an idea floated out there. Um, but there seems to be some, some new interest so, Leland, well, yeah, that, would you like that, to that speak on that? That neat, I, I think, like, logistically right now, if we could just, like, get a Woodbridge one going, it would be great. But, so what we're proposing, and Jim Urbano's kind of, like, been the proponent pushing it, and um, has gotten a couple young people, including myself, involved in, in the idea. Um, so what we're proposing is to have a, a town agricultural commission um, that would, I mean, I, I think I, I've i worked on a few CSAs, I've worked in on farms my entire life, um, I worked on a cattle ranch for two summers, and um, I think supporting local agriculture, eating food that's grown locally is, I don't think anyone's against that, obviously you're really into it. Um, so I think having a commission for that would, I mean, seems like the next step for supporting that in our town. Um, I, it'd be a pretty basic committee. Uh, I mean, like you guys, it's just an advisory committee, I think. But did you guys, did any of you guys get a chance to read any of the attachments in the emails? I did. I did. I um, did. Yeah. There, there, were, yeah. there were two specific that I had read. One was the draft <laughs> ordinance. Yeah, which is pretty published. straightforward. It just yeah. states our purposes. The commission shall make recommendations to the Board of Selectmen regarding the preservation, use, and conservation of farmland in agriculture within the town of Woodbridge with the goal of educating, raising awareness, and supporting Woodbridge agriculture. Um, and then pretty much everything we're drawing from is the statutes specified um, in the Agricultural Commission uh, pamphlet right here. Yep. So part, parts of this were circulated um, from the town. We got pages 17, 18, 19, and 20. This is that doc, the, one, that's this, the one that you sent yeah. or that Leland sent? This is the one you sent? This is the one that I had sent. This is actually much bigger. I yeah, think, so what... about 40 pages what total. The part of it that's kind of like more specific and was also attached in the emails, it says an agricultural council is to provide information to local farmers and municipal boards and commissions about the benefits of a balance between agriculture and other land uses, educate municipal officials about agricultural laws and safety issues, identify grant sources for farmers and municipalities, enable a common understanding of agriculture, agriculture among all municipal departments, provide information and guidance about zoning issues re relating to agriculture, 
support local, regional, and state vocational agricultural programs concerning agricultural matters, provide conflict resolution advisory services, identify innovative opportunities for agriculture, and create a climate that supports the economic viability of agriculture in the municipality. Which I think um, that last part is kind of Troy Sorensen, who's Chris Sorensen's son, um, has been to the few like uh, meetings we've had, kind of trying to get this off the ground. And uh, my buddy Will Conway, who you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. um, and myself started, we planted 200 logs with shiitake mushrooms on them this past fall, which is just kind of like a fun little farm project we have taken on. But um, it's just about sort of pushing for having local agriculture and uh, I think there's a lot of farms in Woodbridge that are either like generational or historical like all the great things that have happened at the Darling House that could be sort of resuscitated through having this sort of commission um, and I think that's what we'd be able to do is kind of identify who might need help what farm is historically significant and see what we could do to make them economically viable or even produce anything again. Am I allowed to ask a question? Yeah. Oh, yeah this how is, this how is many totally are there? Like, like farms in Woodbridge? Well, yeah, like, like, we actually just came up with a list of them. Uh, I didn't print that out on an email. And for but. example, I mean, I, just because I don't, I honestly, like, the only one I know is Masaro Farm. No, that's, that's, yeah. that's legitimate, right? I mean, right well, oh, there's oh, the oh, ones oh, that are that are productive in producing and making it economically so viable. Is there, is there <laughs> so anything that... Well, see, and he still does a little farming. With the Savino down, wine down he has? Like yeah, he, was, yeah, he, he came to our meetings. And his daughter, and doesn't she... And, and they in live the in the back of the Dowling House, they grow some... They have, they, they like, cows or something, and they... Yeah, yeah right. So the there, there are... So and he's been coming to the meetings. Yeah, he's totally in support of it. Yeah. Well, you know where Bond Road is before you get to Bond Road? On the... If you had yes, north, uh, they the they have side, so they, road, they have that big B on Ansonia Road. road. Yeah. Oh have, right, yeah. 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 the Brownings have, yeah. and they no, have, so they, they, the and they've been not, selling not at the farmers market. market. If you yeah. go yeah. there, it's really yeah. so there, I think it's a good idea because yeah. there are yeah. all of these like you know these people, but if you come together, then could be connected. Yeah, I don't know what else. Do you think they want to be? I mean, I don't know. I think the Brownings are. I mean, they're sons of my daughter's class. And Matt, I mean, it's yeah, they would love it. They're great. They're really I mean, I laid back. I think it's a great use of the land if we, you know, if we can get some open space and some people to farm it. And the other thing is, when I was looking for grants, there's a lot of agricultural grants that I saw, and that's I, you know, mm -hmm. there's more money for agriculture right now than there is for open space or trails. I saw from what the research I did. Yep. And a lot so of those open the door for that as well. Yeah, a lot of those grants are specific to the producers themselves. For example, the town wouldn't be able to apply for them. My experience is through Masaro and working with the CSA side of that um, and Farmer Steve and his applications for NRCS grants, um, the Depart USDA grants, and they're all targeted towards those that are actually producing. Um, and certainly an ag commission or an ag committee uh, would be able to help guide yeah. those folks through the process because right. it can be a daunting process um, I feel like it has to be people though like you and who are knowledgeable like I don't I yeah and often on okay. and often an ag commission is staffed with the producers themselves oh, yeah. right okay. um, so you, you you'd want someone like um, yeah. a Sorensen or a Steve Mono or even I know Frank. You just mentioned. I don't think anyone else heard the Luciani's. Yeah, still, yeah. Still and still he was, he was at our our first two meetings also. Yeah, so. yeah. And some of those producers are aware. For example, Farmer Steve obviously is ear to the rail on everything around um, income for the farm and ways to get grants to right. to benefit it right. for sure. Is he participating? Um, <laughs> I I he hasn't been to any of the meetings. I know he's been made aware of them, but um, yeah. I mean. He's 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 pretty successful, you know. I think I I think that the Masaro folks have like shown support, but um, we're still kind of like researching and figuring out what we need to do to help other farms. And I think 
you know, they might be able to help us, has, but has, I don't know how we could help them. <laughs> has, Ethan, has Ethan been? Yeah, e Ethan's Farms? been in correspondence. Okay. He hasn't been able to make a meeting yet, but he's su it's supporting it also. How about um, Orange and Bethany? Do they have? Um, no, creation? neither have agricultural not, not creations. Yeah. No. Because they have a big one. Right? Oh, yeah. Like, they, they, they have a ton know. of farms. Right. Yeah. Um, it's strange because I think only about 20% of towns in Connecticut have an agricultural commission. Yeah. Um, and then other <laughs> things like this end up, you know, taking on whatever sort of like questions or open space things they need to deal I, with. Yeah. But I have having question. a specified group like this, I think, could totally help. And we have so many farms. Uh, I have a question, Leland, uh, about the, uh, from what it says here. We, it, it needs to be established a uh, legislative body pass an ordinance and, and you, you have to I guess you have to go through the Board of Selectmen yeah right. in order to pass yeah we're right. talking about procedure to, to actually establish it yeah the formal process is, is involved for yeah. some for sure yeah absolutely uh, another <laughs> thought that that's been floated out there is perhaps it starts as a committee um, right because there is a lot of overlap between what the conservation commission is tasked with and what an agricultural commission an agricultural commission or even an agricultural committee um, is very focused specifically on farms and agriculture where conservation is a bit more broad uh, my, my thought is perhaps maybe it would start as a committee to make sure that there's a proper base of support and need in woodbridge right and having that proven out then it could then have a very strong argument to form as a official commission with board of selectmen and going through the ordinance changes and all of that um, yeah and it's a good get point. being written into the town statute so it becomes much that more involved like a to become a commission to that. yeah, yeah um, absolutely but i think there can be a strong argument to be made it just needs to be done in a very methodical fashion and I know Jim is very uh, like a dog with a bone on something so so yeah no, he would be very great. thorough I mean he, he sort of like thorough. scouted Troy and Will and myself and it's like I need to see that there's kids that want to like you know put their time into helping local farms and so far it's working out so <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still a big I, I think it could be as a tri-town commission I yeah. think it could be very successful yeah I mean um, that I, I could totally see that especially useful. Be I mean, between Bethany and the large number of farms in Bethany and, and not just and, large number and, but and large and also <laughs> large scale of large farms, farms. And, large also. Um, and then orange um, but yeah, I mean, I just, to Julie's point, I don't know if we have that many farms in Woodbridge, really. Well, other than like the, the, you know, Masaros is big, obviously. There must be a reason why they don't have one, so maybe it's better. I think so maybe it's right to focus on ours well, first. And, and I think I, there's a lot of a lot of farms that are becoming defunct because they're not profitable and or economically viable, like the it, the farm across the street from. The Darling House, you know, there's nothing going on there. What's that? The sh Shepherd's, Sarah Shepherd's right. yeah. yeah, and Sarah Shepherd's been at a couple of our meetings also. Yeah, um, there's definitely that looks like a long. It could have been mismanaged a little bit. Well, exactly. Well, there's a long story. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a sad kind of story. Nice. And yeah, no, I've I've Sarah. heard that. Um, yeah, but yeah, Chris Sorensen was kind of telling me about it. But I think if we could get maybe some like my buddy will maybe if if they wanted like somebody to manage the farm and and lease it or something like that so it could be profitable we could manage sort of problems like that or, or find them and help them out right. absolutely but I, I agree with what you're saying is start as a committee and and build up and see how much support and how much of a necessity this sort of thing might be yeah um and I think your father would be a good, I, I think if we were to fork off a subcommittee, um, committees are typically task oriented, which this would be like a, an exploration task perhaps of moving forward ultimately. But we could give very clear instructions on a, on a subcommittee and then have a representative from this commission yeah. well, on Sarah that committee. Well, also maybe be a big mm -hmm. part in that yep. too, because they're pretty, they've got- chair that committee. Um, 
but, on, but Leland could act that, the, Leland could act as, as chair or or at least liaison of sorts. Exactly. And yeah. and because the, the c a committee wouldn't have to be us, because mm -hmm. we all have many other things. <laughs> um, and it's good to have the passion behind you as well for for committee members. Um, and one of the tasks that could be laid out is to do the inventory of the farms that are in town, kind of like what's already been started, yeah. and, and make it clear who they are, where they are, how big they are, and what they're doing now, what, what they propose to do. So it's not just a one line saying, Shepherd Farm. You know, it's, right, right. It, it needs, a little, needs, more, it needs a little more substance besides just a bulleted list of what's in town. It needs some, some gravitas that says, right. this is a farm because, and this is how long they've been doing it, and this is why they're going to keep doing it. And this is what I'll do for and you. One, one more question. Have you talked to any, any other of the people in town that have farms other, other than... Uh, Jim's yeah. been like pretty vigilant about trying to reach out to everybody who has a farm in town. Um, he couldn't make it tonight, but yeah, that, he's that he's on. Good to get their input on, on, on yeah, having the, the stakeholders. He probably has relationships. You know, get, get some with them feedback from right, from and he like actually just farms. planted sure like three hundred three hundred berry bushes at his place. So I think that's kind of what sparked his, his interest. <laughs> but um, I, I, everybody he's heard back from so far has been supportive. I mean, I think a lot of it is like they're hoping like somebody will write a grant for them, you know? <laughs> but um, I, I agree with what you're saying is figuring out like where we could focus our energy and where it would be used. To make, make that initial strong case. So how about... Right. How about, so you don't walk away with nothing? Mm -hmm. um, well, I, I think we wanted to just see, you know, how you guys felt about it, yeah. if, if there was support, you know. Is there interest here to start a committee with a very specific task of exploring this option? I think um, we should and we, and we could, it and see what the, uh, you know, what the and feedback we could, is from the, from the farms in town. Yeah. And, you know. See how far it goes. Yeah, absolutely. And we could write up the committee purpose, description, mm -hmm. make up. Um, usually committees last a certain amount of time. Uh, and we could have that for our next meeting mm -hmm. for something to vote on and, okay. and form it or not sure, form it. Because if we can preserve farmland, that's part of conservation. I mean, it's exactly. what we do. So, exactly. yeah, yeah, I think, I think it, it's yeah, no, that'd it be great. goes along the lines of what we're doing here. So, I think it's a good idea. Yeah. All right. Okay. So I'll I'll have I'll spend some time writing up a committee description definition. So we'll have it for discussion at our next meeting. Great. Um, and you can reach out to me directly or through your dad or yeah. Well, I got uh, your email now. Yep. So yep. Cool. Um, and then I, I and you, I'm sure you'd be super helpful. Um, yeah. After doing all the stuff with the sorrow and yes, whatnot. There's lots up here. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a momentous time in my life for sure to get that thing up and running. So yeah, well, it's amazing. It's fresh in my mind. Um, cool, cool. Well, thank, thank you so you. much, guys. Thank you. I appreciate it. So, the idea Yeah, it sounds like. Yeah, thanks. So, you're gonna formulate all that and then be yeah. on the next agenda. Yep. Cool. So at the next at the next meeting, um, I know that there were some people that wanted to be here tonight for part of the discussion. They weren't. Um, yeah. This will give them an opportunity to come back and have more meaningful discussion once we have the uh, like a full proposal of what a committee would be. Cool. And that way we can discuss it just like we did here, um, but with something real in front of us and tangible to move forward on. Awesome. All right. All right. Thank you guys. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, the next item on the agenda involves me moving this computer over there. <laughs> so, nice is. to meet you guys. I'll see nice you next week. Great to meet you. Yeah. Thank Take you. care. Have a good night. Thank you. I'll text you right now. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so, the next item on the agenda is the rating system of the Alice Newton Street Park. Did you go at all that time? I did. I, I, I went just in case somebody showed did up. Did you so. walk? Was it still icy or no? So, I didn't walk. Okay. So. For those at home watching, um, we did have that planned special meeting 
Was it just last weekend? Yeah. Yeah. It feels like forever. It was really icy, but I don't know if it but melted. It, it iced out, kind of. So <laughs> kind of it was icy super icy. You, I'm okay. glad you spoke up. And then I had a report from the um, Nate Case from the Parks Association. He said, if anyone's coming to the walk, make sure they've got the ice spikes yeah, for their shoes. Really because yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, it was so at that really point, icy. I'm like, you know what? It's This is not an urgent matter. Yeah. We can walk it again in the future. We've all walked the property in the right. past, so yeah. Yeah. let's cancel it and we'll reschedule. Yeah. But in the meantime, uh, I did circulate around the draft that I had written of yeah. the rating system. And I had done this just from home okay. uh, with online resources. So I tried to explain in my write-up to everybody what resources I use. So I thought it would be helpful and educational for all of us to... Uh, yeah, you're good sitting there. You can just spin around. And, and okay. Thank you. Uh, you want to go sit over there, Karen? <laughs> so you can actually see. Yeah. Boy, even I have a hard time seeing it over here. Uh, so this was the draft that I put out there. And boy, I'm going to have a hard time getting the things. I can kind of see. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm looking at the sidebar on my computer because I've got some other documents that I was going to flip over to. Well, but want to sit here and I'll sit there? No, it's the projector. Okay. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> so as I sat at home going through these, it occurred to me that some of these need better and more clear definitions. And I'm actually going to come over here. And maybe I'll stand in point as well. And I'm So what I would like to do is just go down through each of these items on our rating sheet, since that's how I wrote up what I did with what resources. Now before I get into it, is there any particular question that people have about the rating system? No. We've looked at it quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, so the first one is the uh, use of the property. And for that, that was partly, um, yes. A natural state. It's a natural state. And so I described the full definition of what it was. And in my case, the resource uh, was personal. Uh, I've been on the property. I, there hasn't been anything that jumped out to me. Um, as being developed. Other options for the use of property. So in our definitions here for use of property. Natural state, primary agriculture, residential commercial, uh, and then it goes down from there. So that one is very straightforward. Lots of trees, no buildings, no farming. So that scored highly on that measure. Habitat of conservation concern. This one is a tricky one, just because what is, what is a habitat of conservation concern? We've tried to define it in our definitions up here. So there's different levels of whether it protects an existing and documented habitat, or it protects a corridor or it's next to an established habitat. Now, I think we, we talked about referencing the state of Connecticut mm -hmm. um, because they have a resource online about what critical habitats there are in the state. Well, wouldn't, wouldn't the whole... Conservation concern, habitat of conservation concern, or something of that sort. Yeah. But wouldn't, wouldn't the whole yeah. water area and the falls and all that be considered of and concern and... So well, for one thing, there, there are uh, brook trout in there, yeah. in that little Yeah, like whatever's yeah. living that, in there. That's uh, uh, protected. It is. Protected. It is. Yeah. So, so that, yeah. On, on my initial pass through, I had given it a score of 10, which equates to the potential for establishing a habitat of conservation concern. And this is mostly because we we need to be more clear about what 
what is the habitat and what does it mean to be documented? I think that section where the meadows is has, has that. Um, you know, it's not really forested yet and that kind of thing. Oh, the, uh, the meadow section? Yes. You, you know yeah, it's uh, the secondary growth or early successional. Mm -hmm. Early habitat. succession, right. Yeah. That, that, that's, uh, that leads to a habitat conservation concern, usually. I mean, so but I, I think that, that section definitely could be. Yeah, this is fine. this is why I, I I'm glad we're doing it in you know going out and doing it because this obviously when you just sit back and you say we want to preserve this sure. right obviously right. so you want to you want to rate it high because you really want to yeah. preserve it you don't want to build on it right so right. but this isn't giving us the chance to rate it high in that way. Is habitat only count for animals? Does it count for like trees and other types of like habitat? You know what I mean? Is that yeah. only the, uh, animals or fish? Does it also mean you mean live? You mean living? It's the like environment the flora where they, and fauna. Because there's contrive. a lot of trees flora. and all that other stuff. I mean, there's tons. Of I stuff think there. that is in well, here, but habitat. I feel like it's where, where the we, uh, when we thought about this thing, thrive. I think that's for or living. Or <laughs> Well, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Oh, where's the open? So let me just bring up on the overhead real quick this this online resource because this is where if we're confused, anyone who's yeah. reading this that's is right. going to be confused, yeah. and we that's the, the whole point of this is to, it's to I don't erase any confusion. I don't right. think it's confusing. I just don't think that it <laughs> achieves. Well, well, I do achieve. feel like there's a a little bit of a. Um, what's that thing called? Like an imbalance between we want to give it a good score, right. but we have to be um, have objective to and impartial, so right? Right. right. So that, that, right. That so that's would lead to I feel like tricky. Right. right. Exactly. Have to define and, and why it's yeah. not a good score. Right? And, and yeah. to that point precisely, um, during this past or the week before, I went to the, the Woodbridge Parks Association winter meeting. Actually, I skyped in because the weather yeah. was kind of icy and bad. Uh, but a member there also expressed the concern that, well, looking at your rating system, wouldn't the the park rate really, really high? And I said, well, maybe not. Um, it'll rate very high in certain areas, in other areas it won't rate very high mm -hmm. because it's every parcel is different. Some parcels are very much water-based. Some of them are all forest. Some of them have this mix. So the whole point is to have that objective but, but rating the problem system. is is that that habitat maybe not, don't have as many animals because so many people use it more than other trails I've seen in town. So that is like the most the, the most loved trail I would say in town, right? Because so many you know, the high mm -hmm. school is doing it and this and that. But at the same time, it probably all those people chase out some of the animals that could maybe live there if it was highly more highly rated. Do you know what I mean? Yep. Like if you know, there's other trails in town that aren't frequently used, but I've seen bobcats or you know whatever out there, but no one's there. You know, so. So the, again, the idea is to take a look at what the ideal might be, um, and in this chapter two on the Connecticut Wildlife Action Plan, they do get into. Geology, soils, climates. I swear there was a section in here that was awesome for what we needed. Estuaries. We do not have estuaries. There we go. Habitat conservation for connect as well. So reviewing this and applying it during our rating process, I think would speak to this particular measure. I thought they had a nice bulleted list to talk about management, forests, wetland management, habitat. And I don't you need to habitats. plant a bunch of stuff that's like. <laughs> Put a bunch well, of you, you, can't run for, you, you can't run you forcibly install get some uh, species uh, in protected in species. Yeah. Well, that's probably there in there. Is, here, here <laughs> uh, but this is, that, this is it where says that. it kind of. Was a nicely like, summarized of what habitats are and subhabitats, and then you'll, we can look at these and see how precious they are in terms of a conservation concern, and then which of these habitats exist on that particular parcel that we're reviewing. For example, um, old growth forests. 
does that exist on this parcel that we're reviewing? Yes, because a tree fell the first time I ever went down at Clayton. By the time we got back out, a tree had fallen across the... <laughs> yeah. Old it was road. you that did that? No. It was me. <laughs> <laughs> But it, 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 it's A was oak for us, there's, lot, there's some oak in there. Right, so they define the habitats mm -hmm. and then they go on to talk about the key habitats and why they're important. So without getting too far into the weeds tonight, I think this is good homework for all of us to research independently and weigh in on. Because when we reflect back on the whole purpose of doing this, mm -hmm. Habitat of conservation concern, where would, in this case, the Alice Newton Street Park actually land? Um, does it have a documented habitat? Or does it just have the potential to document that protected habitat? Is, is it, well, it is isn't written somewhere? Well, we do have the Yale study. I feel like we're mm -hmm. writing. Doesn't they have all those I feel like that's our. They, they looked at all that stuff, right? Like, is yeah. it already done? We have to camp out there. Yeah. Well, that, well, that set up a tent. This says a lot about it. Yep. Okay. About the about the wildlife. Yeah. What kind of wildlife? So, to move us along, this is why it's I have said needs okay. further research. Okay. Because this is one. Yeah. Okay. That is not quite so cut and dry. I'm trying to discern. Um, variables the next one is site restrictions and in our definition we have two different options there are site restrictions or there are no site restrictions there are any. <laughs> so we have two options to pick from and with this particular property we say there aren't but we need to more clearly define what is a site restriction yeah. So the example that I had found about a site restriction, and this comes from where we developed our rating system. Their example was there was a former landfill on the site that prevents public use. So for example, contaminated okay. property. Okay. That would be a site restriction. And I think it would be important for us to consider fleshing out this description a bit more. Um, if anyone can think of what a site restriction might be. Yeah, there was, there was, there was a uh, landfill not far from. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there was a landfill not far, but not close. I don't think it probably close enough either. But Wait, in, in this area there was a landfill? In there here? was a landfill not far from there. Back oh. at the town hall years oh. ago there was a landfill there. Mm -hmm. Rather than... It's where the... the the public works is. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah, just beyond the public works. Before they they did the, uh, the you know over by uh, yeah the other side of town. The other side of town. Yeah, <laughs> before they changed. Acorn Hill. That's right. Right. And now it's a transfer station. There's no more land. Right. Hill. Yeah. So it was at one time. Where's the land from? Yeah. So so being clear, there were no site restrictions. So mm -hmm. we gave it that score. Proximate to existing preserved lands. It's adjacent to existing preserved lands. And I put need map, and where did I put that map? <laughs> oh, I was gonna show everybody. That's more show and tell. That's what was going on here. Was this the thing you sent us from the... Mm-hmm. That was cool. So there's a couple resources online that I've used. One of them is the Scrog GIS viewer. And I had sent this around to everybody at our I would not expect everybody to have dug into it. I looked, looked at it, but I didn't understand uh, it. I didn't right. understand and it, how you... And I, I might, so with, without even. having seen a demonstration myself of this, yeah. I might not have yeah. gravitated towards What you towards said it. was cool. What you said it, it could it do just was didn't, cool. It just yeah. didn't have like the names of streets on it or anything. Yeah. So you it just didn't had really like wetlands. Like yeah, yeah, so let me show you what I've used it for okay. in helping fill out our rating system. So Scrog covers this geographical area. All the towns are outlined. Down at the bottom left corner, we have this option. Instead of picking towns, we can pick layers. And in our layers, mm -hmm. we see all the towns listed again. Oh my again. goodness. Yep. Woodbridge land use. So we have Woodbridge land use. And I've got Woodbridge Center here right now. Okay. So when I turn on the land use layer, Mm -hmm. It suddenly colors it. All right, that is really cool. Yeah, that is nice. Yeah. And 
the green is open space. The majority up here is all water authority. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the Eldersley Preserve. Oh, so right. where's the Darling House? Are the down that on the that Darling side? House is mm -hmm. over here, okay. right in there, in our our this property. Yeah, this, this right here oh, that's is, that's what we're is trying the new yeah. yeah. See now you can see right? it. I know it's you can great. really see what yeah. we're trying right. to do. So. See that state park? There that would be is. West Rock State Park right there. Yeah. yeah, that little sliver is state property, but it's also pitched at about 60 degrees. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's really, yeah, <laughs> it's it's really, really territory. steep. Yeah. Mountain boat territory, yeah, too bad. So we're able to zoom in. Oh, my goodness. And this is our Alice Newman Street Memorial mm -hmm. Park. Mm -hmm. Currently, we're sitting down here in Town Hall. Yep. So, another, an, another layer. Can you see the blue trail like all the way through? Like, is uh, there is a tool that will put on the trails for us. But let me turn on the layer That's that helps awesome. define the parcels. So this gets to the ability to see. Oh, it's kind of tough to see. Let me come into this corner down here. You know, even here it's hard to see. Very lightly, there's a dotted line here. Mm -hmm. It's easier to see on my computer screen, yeah. less easier to see on the overhead. I see it. But these are other parcels. And the question was... That's not old. Is old it a mill? What is that? Old mill? Yeah. Is it adjacent so to other people live? So the question is proximity to existing preserved lands. So right. one tool to do that is to use the Scrog map. Mm -hmm. And you can click on a single parcel. And it'll tell you what it is. Mm -hmm. In this case, land trust. Oh. If we click on the Alice Newton Street parcel, mm -hmm. it tells you the address, and then you go to the second card, it tells mm -hmm. you the owner. So oh, the park right. association. Wow. That's cool. well, let me back out a little bit so maybe we can see. Who did that? It is cool. Mm -hmm. The scrub people. Yeah. Hmm. Now, another map that so I would say it, it would give us a lot of work. parcels. Yeah. <laughs> another map that is available, and this I've used from time to time. That Scrog map is actually built on this data. So this is the town's GIS, like a geographic <laughs> information system. If you've never seen this, this is awesome. So this parcel right here, mm -hmm. that's the Alice Newton Street Park. And it tells you who the owner is, and we can actually move this, I think. Do you want? No, you don't. It will outline whatever parcel that you click on. So if you wanted to see who your neighbors were, you could click on their parcels too. Wow. And it gives you that information. It gives you uh, the acreage, and then you can go into the details of a parcel. It gets down into the public information about appraisals and so is that the thing that Tim and I used to do? Did that whole thing? That's this is what we use, but I didn't see any of these things where you could this do is all new. this, yeah. isn't it? No, this has been this around. This has been around. I mean, this part I, I this remember crazy. the actual. I haven't yeah. really yeah. anything yeah. ever going yeah. into the. Yeah, yeah. Just to go into the around that. So is so that so Alice so New cool. is 103 acres? That's what it said, right? Yep. Well, that's yep. what it says. Okay, that's great. So to figure out who's adjacent to the parcel, these are the two tools that that are out there that we can use. I used them because I wanted to see this piece up here, mm -hmm. who owns that? So I choose that parcel, so that's land trust, so I know that's preserved well, we properly. Have, we, have, we have trails going from all the way to Indian Trail Road from, from there. Don't oh yeah, yep. But, so it is, you know, connected to other parcels. But what the, about but the immediately the street? Immediate. Adjacent, yeah. Perimeter of it. So down here, yeah. where the, uh, Ball right. fields and the pavilion are. Right. We can see that's the town property. Town right. So, across. Let's go ahead. Go ahead, Karen. Real you quick. know, across, like when you go down, Oops. Um, yeah, Indian Trail. Yep. And then you cross, and then there's still a trail. <laughs> is that there? Do Thank you know what I'm talking about? Is that yeah, a I do. So this. Is that property that you count? No. So you're talking about. Yes. That. Yes. What's that? Three land acres trust of land trust. Town? That's just okay. Yeah. S C R S C R C O G S C R 
So getting back to the rating system, C -O -G. Mm -hmm. proximity to preserved lands, it is adjacent to existing preserved lands. So it's adjacent to the land trust property. We use those mapping tools to determine mm -hmm. that. Yeah. We'll come back to those maps again. So the threat to cultural and historical resources, I had indicated no threat. And the uh, reason I had said no threat, um, it's owned by, um, oh, that's the proximity, sorry. No threat because it's owned by the Parks Association. There's a, a governing okay. body dedicated to preserving this parcel. So the likelihood of there being any threat to something on that parcel is very, very low. Uh, existing trails, well, we all firsthand know that, yes, there's existing trails. So the, so the land score is very yeah, high. That, that's for sure. Yeah, for that. That's easy, yeah. That's the only easy one. And they're good. They're in pretty good shape, too, yeah. those trails are. They are. This next rating item becomes a little more murky. Successional habitat, mm -hmm. percentage covered. Now, I had indicated that um, it needs a little more research, but successional habitat is often more like what the meadow is. Yeah. So it's right. not a forest. Right. Imagine a forest that's been burned down to the ground, and now everything is starting to come back. That's an example of early successional habitat. Or something, you, you might be horrified to walk into a water authority parcel and see them having cut a lots of trees. And they're not doing it because some logger wanted money. They're doing it because it's actually beneficial to bring in habitat for certain species. Certain birds and, birds yeah. and yeah. species so thrive in that content. sort of environment yeah. where there isn't all the cover. Yeah. Right. Right, exactly. So, so the meadows might be. The meadows we, might. We, be. We'd also have to find out what uh, what species they they uh, support. Right, but in terms of what's defining a su early successional habitat, um, I was guessing that meadow is maybe fifteen percent. I was being generous and giving it a twenty-five percent in terms of the overall parcel. How big is that meadow? How many acres is that meadow of the one hundred and three acres? Right. It, it's not quite that It doesn't big. feel like it's, it's 25%, but I don't know. Eight, five not, it's not, it's yeah. not a huge parcel. I know. I know what you mean. One way to help is to flip back over to our maps. Oh, yeah. And we can actually switch to a aerial map. Oh. Let me turn off some of these layers here to make it a little more clear. Let me turn, let me leave the borders on them, but we'll turn off the color. So there's the meadow in the middle of the property. Mm -hmm. It's not really that. And you look at that meadow compared, compared to, the, to entire the entire outline. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And there's certain other areas that are a little more bare throughout. So my thought was 25, maybe. Okay. It's tough. Yeah. It's tough to say without walking it yeah. and, and measuring, and, measuring yeah. and, and being, cool. yeah. So that that's the primary criteria. But two of them need a little more uh, fleshing out for clarity's sake. The next up is the size of the property. That's easy enough. We get that right off of those maps for 103 acres. Development pressure. Now, this was a curious measure. We need to be more specific and clear about what development pressure is because one of the members of the Parks Association saw that and immediately thought, who wants to buy it and build on it. He wasn't thinking of parcels around it that have already been built. So development pressure maybe needs a, a better title well, or certainly a more clear definition. Development pressure from surrounding. Th that, that particular parcel never going to be built, but, but you're right. Or, property around it maybe. Or perhaps we need to have a different measure altogether. So the Alice Newton Street Park has 25 roughly residences abutting it. Mm -hmm. And according to our rating system, yeah, that counts as more than five residences or commercial, so it gets a very low score. It becomes, in that sense, mm -hmm. 
less desirable because there's too much development around it. But when you look at the term development pressure, some people think that you want to save something from being developed yeah, on. Right. And right. they think of pressure in that sense. Sort of like why the town came out and mass for the country club. Right. They felt high pressure to save this parcel from being developed. Mm -hmm. So there's two ways of looking at this definition. One is what's built up around it, mm -hmm. and how is it desirable to have a parcel that's surrounded by commercial industrial? Uh, or do we talk about the potential? Or are they saying no, it's 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 more, more by residential than it? Yeah. Because but still, it's surrounded by. So would it be better just to put like a tent, like use a ten, just like in the middle, or no? Well. My personal thought is we need to change this in some way, and I'm not quite sure how. But right now our development pressure talks about if there's no residences within a half a mile, that's very desirable. If there's proposed development on the parcel, that's oh. not desirable. Okay. A not a desirable parcel. So Because you're if you think about how you would rate the country club now, how what would where would that fall with right. development pressure, right? Exactly. So, so the country club, yeah, it's getting yeah. it had pressure. had proposed development on, right. so it would have been less desirable for us to acquire, mm -hmm. according to this I rating see system. What you're saying. Okay. So, I think we need to it also reconsider this measure <laughs> and and redefine it in some way, because I think there is value in having a open space partial that's not surrounded by residences, but I also believe that if I was buying a house next to a protected preserve, I would like to buy that house. Mm -hmm. So as a property yeah. owner, it would be valuable to me to be next to something. Yeah. So does that mean we should reflect that kind of desire in our rating system? I don't know. Well, I'm sure all those people around Alice Newton, would be, if that was to be developed, would completely, I mean, that's why they right, bought the property yeah. they bought, right? Yeah. But that's not what we're assessing, right? right. So this we're, measure? we're not assessing for a homeowner, we're assessing for no, we're assessing the town, the town to right. preserve, yeah. pre preserve and protect, well, right? Well, like the so preservation value yeah. of the property, right? the value of Yeah, the real estate value would be better for somebody buying a home. There. So this one, uh, I, I think having, now, now, and, th and this was a good exercise to go through and to figure out where our weaknesses are and where mm -hmm. maybe we don't want to throw this one out and come back with something else. Mm -hmm. Put so. a star there. <laughs> and we'll, we'll try to think of it for the next time. I'll try to think of something. Yeah. So these next two are somewhat related, plants and animals. These are... Um, Protected habitat, uh, I mean, protected animals and plants. So if you were federally listed as a rare or endangered species, you'd score very high. Uh, or if there's no such thing on the property, you get a low score. So we like properties that are protecting endangered species. If you're not protecting the endangered species, that, that's OK, too. Uh, the state of Connecticut has a nice resource online, and I think I had called out this in my cross. Have you seen um, we, do Bobcats? Have a list? I saw a Bob, a Bobcat um, at Alice Newton once. It, you know where there's like that barn? Like if you're going on, the, there's, a, there's a property with a barn, mm -hmm. and there's like a rock wall. Yeah. And I was turning, and it was in. It was in that space there. I'm it actually I'm was very shy. I'm not as scared of the bobcats as I am the coyotes. Yeah. The bobcats, would, they'll run. Yeah, they're in our They're really house. beautiful. Mm. They, they're I very, saw a coyote I'm not you able. very hardly mm. see them. It was big and furry. At home? Wow. No, along uh, Racebrook. Mm. You saw what? A it's unbelievable coyote. how many. Yeah, yeah. They're usually they're kind around. of. Usually when, they're skinny. So many people. But this one looked like wolf. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, they kind of they, 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 yeah, they're they're kind of The like bobcats don't scare. They, wow. The coyotes are there wolves? And they yeah. seem big I and. So. I don't know. So, anyway, the coyotes, the endangered species. coyotes are. Well, coyotes get the little dogs. I want to be mindful of time. Yes, sorry. So, the state of Connecticut has an endangered species map by town. Okay. So, I want to pick Woodbridge. 
and bring the map up. Hmm. Okay. And there's bear there, right? So, the bear? The bear. in the town of Woodbridge, yep. there are certain and areas that, saw that are potential for a protected species. So, this is around the high school. Yep. Over here, we've got West almost Rock. all of West Rock. West Rock State Park. Yep. Uh, over here, we've got the, it's a long name, it's part of the open space that's in Sonia by the dam and the reservoir. There's a big trail network. But focusing on the Alice Newton property, um, being that property being here, it's it, close it, to an area that's been identified. It's not overlapped by it. Mm. So we can't say that, yes, there's been identified important species on the Alice Newton it doesn't Park. say It doesn't say what species? It doesn't, and it also doesn't tell you exactly where. Yeah, like what would be by the high school? That's weird. The fear is that if someone were new, someone were to know what and where, they would go and get it. Oh, oh. gosh. They'd want to collect it. They'd oh, want to sample so it. They'd, right. they'd want to breed it. They'd want to oh. do something. So they, the state of Connecticut gives us a general oh. location. And if you want more, you file with the state, mm -hmm. and then they'll get back to you directly mm -hmm. to figure out your intent. So on the rating system, yeah. I have given it a score of five, which is this. So a species has been documented on site or adjacent lands. Yeah. Thinking mm -hmm. it's close to the high school where something has been identified. So we'll throw a little bit in there. Mm -hmm. But that was the tool used to help identify these because if you look at the list of animals, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. No one, e even if all of us in this room picked 10 w and, and spent a year going through it, we would never figure it mm -hmm. out. So okay. we've got to make it something reasonable for us to mm -hmm. accomplish without hiring specialists. Um, we're all volunteers doing the best we can. Mm -hmm. So the cultural and historical, um, there is some cultural and historic interest for this parcel. It was donated to the town in the early 1900s by someone forward thinking about keeping a property. Mm -hmm. uh, my reference here uh, was that it was protected as open space in 1928, held that way by the Parks Association. So there is some local historic interest and in, in poignancy to the parcel. Potential for one or more trails? Oh yeah, Absolutely. it's already got them. Yeah, and it connects, yeah. right? And it does. Mm -hmm. It connects to other adjacent parcels. Sure. On-site buildings? It's got no buildings. If it had buildings, it would score low. Um, in our definition about buildings, there's not a whole lot. It doesn't go up to the max. <coughs> it goes no buildings, one building, and more than one building. So it's not desirable to have a property with multiple buildings because that invites liability and maintenance costs. Down to our last criteria, access. Um, whether there's access to the property or not, there's definitely access on multiple <laughs> spots. Yep. I wonder if they talk about that for emergency purposes. So. Hmm? Like an egress, yeah. Well, I was thinking trailheads and avail accessibility for public use. Uh, yeah. yeah. Did you have a question, Frank? Yeah, yeah as far as access, why why did it score a little higher? Yeah, you have a five, you put a one hundred and one. That's so on ours. It only goes up. To oh, that's all. Point. That's all you get on it. So okay. you can you can have access exists with no improvements. Access exists, but you improve, need improvements, and then poor or no access. So we are yeah, up to access, no problems necessary. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But you can't skip score any high. Um, potential for outdoor recreation needs defined by the rec commission. So I arbitrarily picked hiking and biking because I know I've done both on the parcel. Um, this particular measure only goes up to the midpoint with three or more activities. Mm -hmm. But 
I would like us to talk to Rec and get their list of activities. You know, what what kind of recreation needs does the Rec Commission see? We have, we have hiking, we have biking. I mean, it, it, walk, there's walking, there's bird, bird watching, there's yeah, okay. outdoor yoga in the yeah, forest. What, what, they, what they really consider it's endless. Activity. Exactly. Right. I mean, the high school kids use it for running, right? Right. <laughs> is, 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 is canoeing a thing and, and over on Canola's yeah. Pond? Is yeah. That, I don't know. Yeah. But I think exactly. we should. Exactly. What kind of activity? Well, I guess that would be a recreational activity. So. I think we should talk to Rec around this particular measure. Yeah. How about. How about uh, Skiing. Skiing. Hang gliding from West Rock? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, waterway frontage. Those country skiing. I looked at this one and I had no idea what we were talking about. So I, I went in and looked up what kind of a definition do we have. It's from one place to another, isn't it? A waterway? Oh, so have, uh, so I, I went with the dictionary mm -hmm. and let me move that up. A waterway is defined as a river, canal, or other body of water serving as a route or way of travel or transport. Now, is that only for humans? That's what or does that include animals? Trout. Fish. Mm -hmm. Salamanders. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it was brought to my attention by one of the members of the Parks Association that he said, you know, you're talking about people, but Woodbridge mm -hmm. doesn't really have waterways. It's not like we're right on Long Island Sound or on the Connecticut River. Mm -hmm. So, if waterway frontage is something that's significant to us, we might want to tailor our definition to be different. How about wetlands? Would you put wetlands? We do have wetlands coming up in terms of percentage. Yeah, but waterways, it's supposed to be... Uh, I mean, what's yeah. the benefit of, of water? Water. Well, there is water. Besides waterway. There's way. definitely two forks of the right. water that come through. Right. And I know, Frank, with the West River, Watershed Coalition, you've been keenly aware of travel of fish yeah. in water. Absolutely, yeah. So is that something that we should put into our definition of a waterway? Probably. Not, not limit it to people? Should we talk about a waterway for habit, for nature? Absolutely. I think it's so this was one that I flagged as, we need a better definition. Okay. It's clearly, it's not, not doing it. All right. Riparian forest buffer size, uh, we definitely have that, um, and I think I'll even bring up the definition for everybody, because it's an odd term if you've never come into it, and I can't just rattle it off. All right. Hmm. Water. Stuff on the sides. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I like this picture. This helps it a little bit. So imagine a riparian buffer being that area on the sides of the stream. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think we and talked about that when we figured it out. Yeah. So that's, they have that, right? Yeah. So a riparian forest buffer includes zone one, closest to zone two, a little bit further. So if you look at the Alice Newton Street Park, there's two major parts of the Wipawag River coming through it. And if you measure it out using our fantabulous maps here, um, there are some tools in here. And, well, I'm just going to rough it out right now. So there's that, which is 288 meters. That's one fork up the Wipple log. And then it also kind of snakes its way up this way as well. If you double click, I think it stops. So the total that I just outlined is 1,000 meters. So very roughly meters to yards. Actually, wait, These wait. people work really hard. That is really impressive. Isn't this cool? So you can change it to feet. How much information you have yeah, on that? Yeah, imagine how much walking we'd have to do yeah. 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 if we have to go awesome. to the So yeah. 3,400 feet of yeah stream uh -huh. mm -hmm. and assuming that a riparian buffer is along the stream the Alice Newton Street Park is rated high so more than 200 mm -hmm. feet 
plastic forest cover. Well, if you just looked at the aerial map of the property, it's, 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 forest. It's, it, it's mostly forest. Yeah. Mostly forest. That's easy. And I'm speeding along this for Karen's benefit. Okay. You guys, I can go to risk it this day. Well, we're down to the last one. Okay. So wetland cover. This one was a little more curious. But, again, thanks to this particular scrog map, we can put on environmental wetland soils. So now this overlays our map showing where wetland soils are. Mm -hmm. And look at they're right all in there. Oh, they're right, right in the park. And then there. you want to figure out how much it is and they have a tool to calculate area. So I meticulously came in here and oh, come on, stop doing that. Yes, I get it. I was thinking. Well, no, stop. <laughs> All right, demonstration fail, but there is a way. Maybe I need to be in a different view. Nope, now I've got a line. Oh, poorly drained, very poorly drained. So I'm just going to give a quick. Yeah, shape. It's going to measure the whole thing out, the whole area. That is so cool. So it tells me that I've circled. And let's do in acres. Um, yeah, two and a half acres. Two and a half acres. That's awesome. So At least. I, I roughed that out yeah. on this whole parcel using that aerial area tool mm -hmm. um, and came up with approximately 27 acres. That's good. Did, that did a good job on that. That's awesome. So the final score using all of these measures comes down to 292.5 out of 380. Is that high? Is that low? We have to do another one to we compare don't, it. Right. We have to start. First, we need we to figure to out. It with our, our, so we we're going through the process of figuring out, is this a valid rating system? Do we have things grouped properly, defined well? But most importantly, does it work the way that it's supposed to, that right. we're supposed to be you yeah. Know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we can lay out all these very objective criteria, but but does it mean anything in the end? Mm -hmm. So, picking parcels that we already know, I think, is definitely the right way to go. So, what's the what's the opposite of Alice Newton? Yeah. I don't know. You know, like what oh, would yeah. be what would be the opposite? I could need another these other ones out there. I mean, we, we okay. could uh, let me bring up the town GIS map here. If we go over to the Bradley Road area, mm -hmm. how about West Rock Materials? <laughs> or I'm just arbitrarily saying, what if the town were to buy JCC property or something? I don't know which. Well, they talk about that piece across. Fr is that on Bradley? That white part over there? Yeah. This. Yeah. Don't they? Talk, isn't that a little bit controversial? Yes. This is the village. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that could be another one to examine as, a, see, as a sample. Just to see. It's less diverse. Yeah. It's all pretty much all open. I mean, it's land and people talk point. about you know the, the controversy is about whether you know what people want to do. We can compare it with. Uh, I just had a quick question before I go. Yeah. The the recent survey that went out from Beth Heller. Are we? Do we have anything to do with that? Or once everything comes in, or that's nothing to do with our nothing country? Nothing to do with us. Okay. us. Although, okay. definitely tell your friends and neighbors to fill it out. It feels I like it, it out. Because it feels curious. like it overlaps with us, but somehow we don't. Yeah, um, no, I was just curious. Before. Yeah, right now they're just gathering info yeah. from the public. Um, you guys all filled it out, right? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, good. Absolutely. I'm just sorry. I, d I know I didn't mean to change the subject just before I went. So I don't want to do that. So, jump it back to the rating system. That's what we've done. It looks as though we need to do some cleanup, some better definitions. So habitat of conservation concern, we need to look more into early successional habitat, development pressure, waterway. These are areas that we need to work on. Okay. So we'll check off the stuff we so have to work on. How can we help? Do you want us to 
Do you want to specific? Do some research on your own. Okay. Um, bring back whatever findings you can on these measures. And I don't okay. know why I suddenly decided to do that. Um, because we are going to continue this process okay. moving forward. Um, other examples of properties that we could do? We could do the country club. Well, I, I mean, that was a recent purchase by the town for controversial now as mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be interesting to see what its score is. And then we could also look at other parcels, Eldersley Preserve, the Darling House area. Um, there's other there's area. We, it, yeah. Yeah. Well, Park Lane, we talked about acquiring some of that land around Park right, Lane. Right, over on Park Lane. Some of that. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, a couple yeah. parcels. So this is Park Lane. So you come up Fountain Street from New Haven, mm -hmm. you make a very hard left. Mm -hmm. Right. You yeah. go down to this dead end. Hard right. Uh, those are those, hard right. those houses that are like high, right? Yeah. So stop and shop is down over down. here. Yeah. How about the old Indian Trail there? That, 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 so the Indian Trail comes right up there. Yeah. Is it right a dead there. end, Parkland? It is a dead uh -huh. end. Yeah. And this is not technically a road. Yeah. But there's a parcel Mark, here. Uh -huh. at the end there? Uh, that one. On there on Eight the and a half acres that's privately owned, but it's surrounded by United Illuminating property, Town of Woodbridge property. Oh. Mm -hmm. Across the street is Town of Woodbridge. Is it is it kind of, is it about the highway? No. Nope. No. No. The uh, Merritt Parkway is right here. Okay. And it kind of angles over, comes out down here. Uh, this parcel is actually for sale right now, 10 acres. And it's surrounded by Woodbridge, Woodbridge property. And there's a house on that or no? No, it's vacant land. Oh. Ten, 10 acres of open space. Uh, so. Is there more about the rating system for now? You're going to reschedule the Alice Newton well? Yes. I think maybe we will do a. Uh, I, I, I think we just need to zero in on it. We have to tw tweak on it now. Yeah. For the, yeah. And, and then possibly try it on some properties. Yeah. Right. Um, rescheduling the walk. I don't know. Maybe through email. Okay. Figure out the best day. Can't we just do it? It was really. Day? I, I, I felt know. bad. It was you like you want to do it on your walk day? Yeah. Why not? Sure. Why don't we do that? And that way it gets you out of trying to figure out what you're doing. So March third at ten o'clock. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Very good. Idea, Julie. It's Very the first perfect. Saturday in March. I will not be here. Oh no, no Daisy! I'm not having it. Be here. here. I have to. Be oh yeah. <laughs> don't you think? Oh, well, you know, maybe I will be back. I will just be I feel like completely March red eyes. I, I will fly okay, the red eye from New Mexico back to New Mexico. I have something on March 3rd. Uh, mm -hmm. my care. We'll take you in your wheelbarrow. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> there. So March let's third. let's put it in March 3rd, 10 a.m. Okay. I'll get a hold of the oh, I have Park have Association. I have. That's what I got. I got it. Right <laughs> you do? There'll never be an ideal time. Oh, I don't. I don't. Okay. Wait, wait a minute. Shoot. Okay, that's where we'll be. Good. Yeah. And I'll sit over here for the end of the meeting. Um, my chairman's report. Okay. There is a Connecticut Land Conservation Conference coming up Saturday, March 17th. Excellent workshops at this. I intend to go. It's at Wesleyan, so it's a fantastic venue as well. Good food, by the way. <laughs> uh, excellent speakers that come and give keynotes. I really encourage everybody to come to, to these. March 17th. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and the only other thing on my report was to talk about our March trail walk for uh, publicity. So I'm going to have Lauren do her blasts. Great. And okay. She does great publicity. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's do that again. Well, if we're going to evaluate the, if we're going to have a draft rating, should we have, is that also, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're right. It's, a, it's It'll be a special meeting, so maybe, yeah, maybe not. Yeah. Really go over oh, okay, much. Okay, yeah, it's really not going to be a, right. a, a, a public one. Because we, ha we did do that special meeting at the country club one time, 
and it was difficult to keep us separate from the public yes. yeah, so that it, they were it, not it, it influencing is. our right. discussion and mingling yeah. and nodding with official business. <laughs> right. He might not want to go in March yet. It might be too cold anyway. Connecticut. Yeah. One more thing, Jason. The uh, open space and watershed oh. land acquisition grant program is open again. Did you did you get that? Yes. And, and it's uh, you know if we're going to do anything, we can start early. Yeah, we need a plan. Yeah. It, it, you know, yeah. It, it's good until February. So. Yeah, I think that they'll start receiving applications in October. But they they announced all the awards. It's 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 in. Is it? Is I think it it's open? on that one. Yeah, it's open. Uh, uh, accepting applications through February 1st is current. Oh, wait, February 1st? Yeah, it's that's right. I think it's open right now, the way it reads. Well, it's February 15th, so. Yeah. So I In any case, we, we definitely so know that it's there. It's there if we can, you know, think of a parcel that we. All right. All right. In the corner of the room, is there. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll oh, second. Okay. Oh, okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Have a good night. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Thanks. Jason.